external USB storage has advanced rapidly in the last few years, and I'm completely reliant on these external SSD drives for my workflow. I've got quite a few of them here, and you know, they're rather brilliant. Recently, Orico reached out to me and asked if I'd like to review their IV300 external SSD. Uh, they're claiming a read speed of 985 megabytes per second and a write speed of 931 megabytes per second, uh, which would be very nice indeed. So let's see if those claims are true. Uh, we'll be testing it using both PC and Mac, and the performance on the M1 Mac is pretty eye-opening. Now, full disclosure, Orico provided this drive without cost for review purposes, but as always, I only accept it on the basis that I retain full editorial control and I've got the freedom to offer my honest opinion. My first impressions of the unit itself are good. The enclosure is aluminium, it feels very solid. There's a loophole so that you could attach this uh, drive to a keyring for convenience, although you still have to carry cables around with you, uh, but it might be a nice feature for some. And the drive itself, as you can see, is very small. Here we compare the size to a traditional external spinning disc and also let's grab one of those Samsung T5s. Uh, you can see it's a lot smaller. And this small form factor is both a good thing and a bad thing, as we'll see. The drives are available in 250 gig, 500 gig and one terabyte editions. And I've got the 500 gigabyte model here. Color choices are black, red, blue and silver. And as we can see from this promotional graphic, Orico is suggesting that it's a good match for the MacBook. I'm assuming that they're not necessarily talking just about the colour here, but rather they're saying that it's a useful accessory for MacBook users. I think it does match the Apple aesthetic. Uh, the drive is supported on all of the common operating systems, so we're going to test it in Windows with both an Intel laptop and an AMD workstation. And then we'll try it in macOS with both Intel and M1. We know that the M1 has an issue with USB speeds, so I'm interested to see how much performance we might lose. Uh, but we'll test Windows and the Intel Mac first just to establish the actual performance of the drive. There are two cables supplied with the drive. We've got a uh, Type-C to Type-C cable and a Type-A to Type-C cable. As you can see, the cables are short, but I think this makes sense for this sort of drive. Uh, when I need a longer cable, I favour these uh, nice cables from Pepper Jobs. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to these cables and also the drives. So you can use this drive with the fastest 10 gigabit USB standard, which is commonly referred to as USB 3.1. Uh, but it will also work at a slower speed with the 5 gigabit USB standard, commonly referred to as USB 3.0. If you want to get to grips with the confusing naming standards for USB, uh, I did a video on that. But for the purposes of this video, we'll refer to the standards by the speed of the ports. So we are going to have 10 gigabits per second and 5 gigabits per second. We're going to start by testing the drive on this Razorblade Stealth 13 laptop. Uh, inside is an 11th gen Intel Core i7, and the laptop has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one on each side that incorporate that 10 gigabit USB standard. And there's also two Type-A ports, which according to the Razer website are 5 gigabit ports. So we'll start by plugging into one of those faster ports and we'll run Crystal Disk Info. Uh, this doesn't reveal much, and I don't know how much to trust the data I'm seeing here. The temperature, for example, never changes from 40 degrees. I've noticed other reviewers are saying the same thing, so I doubt that it's a faulty sensor in my specific model. You'll notice also that trim support isn't mentioned, but Orico do say that it's supported, and I've seen other reviews that appear to have verified this. So let's now do a run in Crystal Disk Mark. I've just used the standard settings here with a one gigabyte test file, and this thing is fast. Look at this, writes at 980 megabytes per second and reads at over one gigabyte per second. Uh, which is even faster than Orico claimed. A crystal Disk uses a variety of reading and writing patterns to test speeds in different scenarios. So these fast speeds that we're seeing at the top here are a good reflection of general purpose performance, and they represent the sort of speeds that you might be expecting with light copying tasks and reading of smaller files. I like to use Blackmagic's Disk Speed Test, which is a tool that's designed to show how a drive will work with the various Blackmagic video codecs. This is perhaps more representative of a heavier workload. So let's do a run with that. We're still connected to the 10 gigabit port and we're going to use a five gigabyte test file. 
And again, you can see the performance is excellent. Now, of course, a couple of test runs in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test isn't enough to properly stress the drive and to gauge whether it can sustain that performance. And this is an important point, which we'll come back to in a moment. But now let's try the Type A to Type C cable, again on the razor blade Stealth, and we'll run the test. And we notice something's not quite right here. Clearly the Type A ports that are on this laptop are actually 10 gigabit spec, contrary to what Razer say on their website. Uh, there's only a small difference between the test results on the two different ports, and a 5 gigabit USB port would not be able to achieve these speeds, since the theoretical maximum is 625 megabytes per second. As you can see here, we're way beyond that. So I also ran the test on my Lenovo workstation. This again has Type-C and Type-A ports, and these are definitely all of the 10 gigabit spec. Uh, this particular workstation doesn't have Thunderbolt, and it has an AMD Threadripper Pro CPU. What you can see is that the results that we got are pretty consistent with the scores that we got on the Razorblade notebook, all within a reasonable margin of error. I also thought it would be a good idea to test the drive with some other good quality cables. And what I found was that there's no real difference in the speeds. Uh, so I'm going to conclude that the cables that you get with the driver are of good quality. And the speeds that we're seeing here are right up there with the very best of the NVMe USB external drives. Uh, things like Samsung's T7. Uh, but before you rush out to buy one of these, I also ran Crystal Disk Mark on my Lenovo workstation. And just look at these terrible write speeds. And I got the same terrible result on both the Type-C port and the Type-A port. So what's going on here? I know there's nothing wrong with the USB performance on my workstation, so I wondered if maybe the drive is overheating. Sure enough, when I grabbed hold of the drive, it was hot to the touch. Now that is pretty usual for these NVMe drives. The more sustained the usage, the hotter they get. Um, though I don't know exactly how hot this particular Orico drive got because of that bogus temperature readout that we mentioned earlier. All of these types of drives will slow down as they get hotter, but the Orico slows down quite a lot. I don't think that's got anything to do with the quality of the drive or the components inside, it's just the price that you pay for this tiny enclosure. There are no vents, and the surface area is probably a quarter of a Samsung T7, so it's unsurprising that the heat builds up. After I let the drive cool down, which didn't take very long, I ran Crystal Disk Mark again on the workstation, and this time the results come back as expected. So if you're in the habit of transferring large files on a regular basis, or putting your drives to very heavy sustained use, uh, then this Orico IV300 may not be the ideal drive for you. Uh, what about now having a look at macOS performance? Now, I tested the drive first of all on my wife's Intel MacBook Air. This is a 2018 model with a dual-core i5. And the results are basically the same as we've seen on the PCs. So now let's move over to the M1 Mac Mini. Uh, first of all, I plugged into the Type-C port on the back of my M1 Mac Mini. Uh, this is supposed to be Thunderbolt 3 compatible, and it's supposed to support that 10 gigabit USB standard. Uh, but as we've seen from our previous testing, something is not quite right with this first implementation on Apple Silicon. When I tested the Samsung T5 on the M1, I found that it was losing about 25% of the performance, as compared to an Intel Mac. But look at this result. It's pretty much half the performance for the Orico drive as we get on the PCs and the Intel Mac. In fact, the result is so bad, I wondered if it was due to the drive overheating again. So I allowed time for it to cool, I ran the test again, and yes, okay, we got a little bit more write speed this time, but we're still a long way off the actual capability of this drive. Apple really needs to fix this. When I first came across the issue, I was hopeful that it might be something that could be fixed with a firmware update. Uh, but there's been lots of software updates, and the problem still hasn't been resolved. So I'm now inclined to think that it might actually be a hardware issue. And this sucks quite a lot, actually. Uh, given that Apple is soldering storage on their M1 machines, they must know that people will want to use external storage. So it's a bit of a kick in the plums to be taking this kind of USB performance hit. Anyway, of course the M1 Mac Mini also has two Type-A ports, which definitely are of the 5 gigabit per second variety. So let's now test the drive with those. And as you can see, it's a pretty dismal result in comparison to what we've just seen the drive achieving. But it's a fair result for 5 gigabit USB, and pretty much where I'd expect it to be. 
So if your machine is only equipped with five gigabit USB ports, you're not going to get the top speeds out of this drive. But it's also true that you won't be able to push the drive to its limits, so perhaps it won't get so hot. And if that's the case, then the drive would be able to perform consistently at these speeds. And there's not that much difference in price between this and SATA-based external SSDs like Samsung's T5. Uh, this 500GB model is available on Amazon UK Prime at about £116. Uh, you can find it cheaper than that. Uh, it's about $100 on Amazon USA at the moment. The 250GB model is a bit cheaper at £92, but I don't think the price difference is enough to justify it. I'd go for the 500GB model. At the time of recording this, I couldn't actually find the 1TB version for sale. So, would I recommend this Oreco IV300 drive? I'd say with the caveat that I haven't done any long-term testing on it yet. I would say that the performance is really impressive, and I love that small form factor. For most users, I think this is probably a fantastic solution. You get a very portable, very fast external storage device. On the other hand, if you know that you'll be transferring large files regularly, then something like the Samsung T7 or maybe Crucial's X8 drives will give you better sustained performance. Uh, is this drive a good match for the MacBook, as Orico state? If it's an Intel MacBook, definitely. But the M1, not so much. Although in fairness, you'll take a performance hit on any USB drives with the M1. So I'm pretty impressed with this Orico drive. Build quality, performance, they're excellent. And I'm gonna put it to use for some of my video work. And I'm sure it will do the job just fine, but if not, I'll report back. I've put links in the description for these products. The channel earns a very small commission if you choose to buy something. Uh, so if you do that, thank you very much. Uh, you can also support us with the usual thumbs, subs, comments, and shares. Uh, but that's it for this video. Hope to see you again soon for some more geekery.